Welcome students, this is The Professor Travel welcoming you to day two of our Rome and Vatican City adventure. Today, we started with a hop the line tour of the Vatican. This is one of those all day tours that you've got to prepare for because it can be very crowded and there's limited bathroom time within the Vatican, so be prepared. As we came through the side entrance of the Vatican, you had the opportunity to see the official crest of the Vatican at the top of the doorway. After our tour guide purchased the tickets for us and walked us through the entranceway, you can see the basilica at the area um, just beyond, as well as a courtyard that's really very beautiful. The one thing you're accustomed to seeing in the Vatican is that the ceilings are all intricately carved or painted and are exceptionally high. The statuary work is probably second to none anywhere else in the world that I've seen. The ceilings are etched in exquisite beauty with either intricate carvings or painting. The artifacts in the Vatican are some of the oldest in the world. Um, some of these, unfortunately, were poached from other areas within Rome, including the Colosseum. This, however, does not diminish the beauty of the Vatican and all of the historical value of the information that's therein. They do have a way of keeping the artifacts in extraordinary condition, even with all the crowd size and shoulder-to-shoulder -to -shoulder tours that go throughout the Vatican. Again, another perspective of the crowds and the artwork and tapestries just going down one hallway of the Vatican. This is actually on the ceiling of one of the hallways and you can see it's almost like a cameo in a way, but it's massive, displaying a picture of uh, ancient times. Another hallway just laden with beautiful artwork. On display paintings and iconry um, reliefs of different depictions from the Bible and ancient masters who have come to display their wares in the Vatican as were commissioned by the Pope at the time. Again, the reliefs on the ceilings um, are amazing. You have to you have to give it to them because there's there is just no way that you could put all these different pieces of artwork on the ground or the walls. The whole place is done from floor to ceiling with extraordinary pieces of artwork. While we did not get a chance to do any photography within the Sistine Chapel, as you continue moving forward and out, this is a popular area. Um, as you can see the balcony up there, just above the statue, this is where if there is a new Pope, they'll come and announce themselves to the crowd. Again, the artwork in this place is simply stunning. Here's a picture of a courtyard area where they have parking now for people who work and live at the Vatican. Again, from floor to ceiling, the vibrant colors are just everywhere. Most people um, attribute some of these artwork styles to something that Michelangelo did with the Sistine Chapel. Um, while that is a misnomer, it is a style of the time with extraordinary reliefs and artwork in every corner of the buildings. And amazing sculptures, even in the corners of every, in every building location. On relief in one of the hallways, the windows open up the skyline in order for it to let sunlight in to see some of the beautiful sculptures and areas. This specific location is just inside the Basilica. This famous artwork is of Jesus on the sitting on the lap of the Virgin Mary as he's dying or has already died. As you can see, the hallways and archways in the Basilica are just monumentally huge. The gates outside of the Basilica are absolutely beautiful as well, covered in gold. Here's another view of the archways just to give you some perspective to the individual people that are outside of it. Another bit of trivia we found out is that the marble used in the Vatican was unfortunately um, pushed from some areas, including the Colosseum, like I had mentioned earlier, but that does not again diminish the beauty of the location or the historical value of all of the pieces within. Just outside the Swiss Guard, um, the official guard of the Vatican, 
doing something very similar to the guards of Buckingham Palace, uh, where they take their time and do the ritualistic, um, you know, guarding of the Vatican and the Pope. Just after that, we decided to make our way out from the Vatican to the Colosseum. Here's a brief stop through the Pantheon. The Colosseum is where they did a lot of amazing events, including gladiatorial fights and even naval battles, um, which I would have thought would have been very difficult because of the uh, lack of a harbor nearby. But it's just extraordinary the way that they had done the aqueduct system in order to let the water in during those events. Again, on display, the sheer size of the Colosseum. Inside, you can see the excavation of the inside of the Colosseum, as well as all other tour groups that are <laughs> traveling throughout the area. Again, I'm really surprised at how well preserved this is, even with all the tour groups that go through it. The term Colosseum just means large. And while this is a large structure, it is actually very similar to what I guess you could refer to as an amphitheater or a theater for display of um, items, wares, fights, performances. Just outside the Colosseum, you have the stairway that leads up to the Circus Maximus, where they did a lot of events on the outside, such as chariot racing. You can see the remnants of the superstructure from where the Circus Maximus was, as well as um, some of the current areas where they're continuing to excavate. Not as well preserved as the Colosseum, the Circus Maximus is still one of the more historical buildings that were in Rome during the ancient Roman times. With everything from stables to villas, the Circus Maximus location is just extraordinarily large and has an extraordinary view of the city from the hilltop. Here's a little bit of the view from the hilltop area. As we left the Circus Maximus and the Colosseum, we headed back to our hotel, but made a brief stop at Trevi Fountain during the middle of the day. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, please feel free to like and subscribe the video, as well as find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Professor Travel, or on Twitter at The Professor TR1. I thank you so much, and see you again. Ciao.